is uh, 17, is it? 17 of July 2009. Now we come to the fourth chapter of the Sangyutta Nikaya, Mara Sangyutta. I, I mentioned before, Mara is a Pali name for what they call Satan in Christianity. He's a deva staying in the highest heaven, the sixth heaven of the sensual desire realm. Uh, and he uh, frequently comes to disturb the Buddha and his disciples, uh, those who are either enlightened or struggling to attain enlightenment. The first Sutta 4.1 Thus have I heard, on one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Uruvela, on the bank of the river Naranjara, at the foot of the goat herd's banyan tree, just after he had become fully enlightened. Then while the Blessed One was alone in seclusion, a reflection arose in his mind thus, I am indeed freed from that grueling asceticism. It is good indeed that I am freed from that useless, grueling asceticism. It is good that steady and mindful I have attained enlightenment. Then Mara, the evil one, having known with his own mind the reflection the Blessed One's mind, approached the Blessed One and addressed him in verse. Having deviated from the austere practice by which men purify themselves, being impure, you think you are pure. You have missed the path of purity. Then the Blessed One, having understood this is Mara, the evil one, replied to him in verses, Having known as useless any austerity aimed at the immortal state, that all such penances are futile, like oars and rudder on dry land, by developing the path to enlightenment, virtue, concentration and wisdom, I have attained supreme purity, you are defeated and maker. Then Mara, the evil one, realizing the blessed one knows me, the fortunate one knows me, sad and disappointed, disappeared right there. Uh, that's the end of the sutta. So you see, uh, the Buddha, just after enlightenment, uh, he was very happy uh, and he claimed uh, that um, he has become enlightened and he is free from all that uh, ascetic practices uh, which he was practicing uh, before enlightenment, uh, wasting six years uh, suffering. Uh, and uh, finally, he found the path to enlightenment. And Mara, still, after enlightenment, still comes to try to uh, fool the Buddha by saying that the Buddha has not become pure or enlightened, but the Buddha understood that it was Mara. So when the Buddha identified him, he went away. The next sutta is 4.5. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Varanasi, or Varanasi, in the deer park at Isipatana. There the Blessed One addressed the monks thus, monks, Venerable Sir, or Bhante, those monks replied, the Blessed One said, Monks, I am free from all snares or traps, both celestial and human. You, you too, monks, are free from all snares, both celestial and human. Wonder forth, O monks, for the welfare of the multitude, for the happiness of the multitude, out of compassion for the world, for the good, welfare and happiness of devas and humans. Let not too of you go the same way. Teach, O monks, the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing. Reveal the perfectly complete and purified holy life. There are beings with little dust in their eyes who are falling away because they do not hear the Dhamma. There will be those who will understand the Dhamma. I too, monks, will go to Sanani Gama in Uruvela in order to teach the Dhamma. Talk here for a while. Huh? So here, huh, this must be the time huh, after 60 monks huh, had become enlightened and the Buddha thought huh, it is enough. Uh, 
just enough of them uh, to go and spread the Dhamma. Uh. So he asked them to go all over India to teach the Dhamma to people. Uh, and he told them, don't two of you go by the same road. Uh, all take different paths uh, and all go and uh, teach. Uh. So you see, actually, uh, sometimes people don't understand. They say that the Arahans are selfish. It is the Arahans who spread the Dhamma. It is the Arahans who memorize all the Dhamma. And so that now... Nowadays, uh, 2,500 years after the Buddha's passing away, uh, we still have the Dhamma with us. It is not the Bodhisattvas who, who handed down the Dhamma to us. It is the Arahants. Then Mara, the evil one, approached the Blessed One and addressed him in verse. You are bound by all the snares, both celestial and human. You are bound by the great bondage. You won't escape me, ascetic. And the Blessed One said, I'm free from all the snares, both celestial and human. I am free from the great bondage, your defeated and maker. That's the end of the sutta. So here you see yeah, the uh, Mara, he, when the Buddha was struggling to become enlightened, uh, he also came to disturb the Buddha, tried to distract him uh, so that he won't become enlightened. Now even after the Buddha has become enlightened, he still comes to uh, to uh, dog the Buddha. And like here, you see, the Buddha wants his monks, uh, his disciples, to spread the Dhamma. And of course, Mara is not happy. If they spread the Dhamma, then more people know the Dhamma, more people get out of samsara. And Mara is not happy. So that's why let's come again. 4.6. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Now on that occasion, the Blessed One was sitting out in the open, in the thick darkness of the night, while it was drizzling. Then Mara, the evil one, manifested himself in the form of a giant king serpent and approached the Blessed One. Its body was like a huge boat made from a single tree trunk, its hood like a large brewer's sieve, its eyes like the large bronze dishes of Kosala its tongue darting out from its mouth like flashes of lightning emitted when the sky thunders, the sound of its breathing in and out like the sound of a blacksmith's bellows fill, filling the, with air. Then the Blessed One, having understood this is Mara the Evil One, addressed Mara the Evil One in verses. He who resorts to empty huts for lodging, he is the sage, well-controlled, he should live there, having relinquished all. That is proper for one like him. Though many creatures crawl about, many terrors, flies, serpents, the great sage gone to his empty hut, stirs not a hair because of them. Though the sky might split, the earthquake, and all creatures be stricken with terror, though men brandish a dart at their breast, the enlightened take no shelter in acquisitions. These acquisitions, the Pali is Upadi, you can also uh, translate it as attachments. So the enlightened take no shelter in attachments. Then Mara, the evil one, uh, disappeared right there. That's the end of the sutta. So here I'm just uh, reading one of the suttas uh, where Mara manifested himself uh, in different forms uh, to frighten the, the Buddha or the other monks. Uh. In this case, uh, he took the form of a huge snake, uh, a huge naga. So if a person is not enlightened, uh, you'll be frightened out of your mind uh, in the darkness. Uh. Such a huge snake coming. Uh. But you see, like the Buddha and his Arahant disciples, uh, their mind is always tranquil uh, so that uh, even if something frightening occurs, uh, the emotions uh, are still not like unenlightened beings. Uh. Unenlightened beings, uh, once a threat comes to your life, uh, the fear will immediately rise. Uh. And there is nothing more frightening uh, than the occasion when our life is threatened. In the case of the Buddha and the Arahans, uh, they have no more self. So when their life is threatened, uh, they, they don't, their, their emotions don't stir. They, there's some other sutta where the Buddha says, uh, these arahans, uh, if you take a dagger, and you want to stab him in the chest, uh, he will not cry for help. There's no more self. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why people don't understand. Uh, people read the books and uh, they say the Arahants are selfish. How can they, they be selfish when they have no more self at all? Mm. So here the Buddha is saying, uh, he who resorts to empty huts for lodging, he is the sage, self-control. He should live there, having relinquished all. So here, the real ascetics, uh, they live in huts uh, which are empty, uh, empty of a friend, empty of property. There's hardly anything in the hut. It's a place for him to rest. Eh? So the Buddha says, uh, Buddha and his monks, uh, they move from here place to place uh, just like birds. Uh, the birds uh, don't carry anything with them. So the same for the monks. During the Buddha's time, uh, they just carry this one set of three ropes uh, and the arms bowl. That's all. And that's enough for them to move all over India. 4.7. Oh, no. I just mentioned here, uh, this, this sutta is where the uh, Mara took the form of a serpent. And on others, in other suttas, uh, which I'm not going to read, uh, sometimes Mara manifests himself uh, as a huge elephant uh, come to frighten the Buddha or the monks. And sometimes he... Uh, make the sound uh, uh, as though the as an earthquake uh, uh, and all that uh, just to frighten the Buddha's lungs. 4.7 On one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Then when the night was fading, the Blessed One, having spent much of the night walking back and forth in the open, washed his feet, entered his dwelling and lay down on his right side in the lion's posture, with one leg overlapping the other, mindful and clearly comprehending, having attended to the idea of rising. I'll stop here for a moment. You see, yeah, the Buddha and his among disciples, uh, you see here, when the night was fading, the Blessed One, having spent much of the night walking back and forth in the open, the night uh, starts at about 6 p.m. So when the night was fading, uh, probably it would be around uh, the first at the end of the first watch, uh, about 10 p.m. Uh. So the, the Buddha spends much of the night uh, walking back and forth. Uh. Uh, most of us, uh, when the night comes, uh, we feel exhausted. We want to lie down and take a rest. Uh. But the Buddha and his uh, disciples, uh, they try to maintain their wakefulness uh, for as long as possible uh, until they are totally exhausted, they cannot stand, then only they go and lie down. This practice of uh, maintaining the wakefulness uh, in Pali is called Jagarya Nu Yoga, from the word Jaga. So we Jaga our mindfulness. Uh, then uh, you see the Buddha, he, when he lies down, uh, he lies down on his right side uh, in the lion's posture. Chinese we call what? Su Tzu Wo. Mm, lying on the right side, one leg overlapping the other. You see here, mindful and clearly comprehending, sati sampajanya. Mm, that means uh, even when the Buddha and his monk disciples, when they lie down, uh, they don't fall asleep. Uh, they still practice sati, they still practice sampajanya. They are still mindful and they are still uh, remembering their meditation su subject. La. Sati is remembering your meditation subject. La. So like if they are meditating on the breath, uh, even he lies down or so, uh, he still watch the breath. Uh, try not to fall asleep. La. Then Mara, the evil one, approached the Blessed One and addressed him in verse. What? You sleep? Why do you sleep? What's this? You sleep like a wretch. Thinking the hut's empty, you sleep. What's this? You sleep when the sun has risen. And the Buddha said, Within him craving no longer lurks, entangling and binding, to lead him anywhere, with the destruction of all acquisitions or attachments. Uh, the, the awakened one sleeps. Why should this concern you, Mara? Then Mara, the evil one, disappeared right there. Uh, so you see, um, the Mara is always coming to disturb the Buddha. But once the Buddha sees that the Buddha recognizes him, then he will go away. Four 
4.9. That's what I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. There the Blessed, there the blessed One addressed the monks thus, Monks, Rebel Sir, those monks replied. The Blessed One said this, Monks, this lifespan of human beings is short. One has to go on to the future life. One should do what is wholesome and lead the holy life. For one who has taken birth, there is no avoiding death. One who lives long, monks, lives a hundred years or a little longer. Then Mara, the evil one, approached the Blessed One and addressed him in verse. Long is the lifespan of human beings. The good man should not disdain it. One should live like a milk, milk-sucking baby. Death has not made its arrival. And the Buddha said, Short is the lifespan of human beings. The good man should disdain it. One should live like one with head aflame. Or the, the, the head burning. There is no avoiding death's arrival. Then Mara, the evil one, disappeared right there. So there are many instances, the end of the sutta. There are many instances like this huh, when the Buddha is trying to teach Dhamma to the monks huh, or to some lay person, huh, and the Buddha comes to, uh, sorry, the Mara huh, comes to disturb them huh, and sometimes try to control their minds huh, so that they don't understand the Dhamma. He is trying to contradict the Buddha, but when the Buddha recognized him, huh, then he left. Huh. The next sutta is 4.18. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Magadans at the Brahmin village of Panchasala. Now on that occasion, the gift festival of the young people was being held at the Brahmin village of Panchasala. Then in the morning, the Blessed One dressed and taking bowl and robe, entered Panchasala for alms. Now on that occasion, Mara the evil one had taken possession of the Brahmin householders of Panchasala, inciting in them the thought, don't let the ascetic Gotama get arms. Then the Blessed One left Panchasala with his bowl, just as cleanly washed as it was when he entered it for arms. Stop here for a moment. That means uh, the Buddha went into this village uh, for arms, uh, and this Mara, he possessed control the people's minds uh, so that they were not inclined to give the Buddha anything. Uh. So the Buddha came out of the village uh, totally empty-handed. Then Mara, the evil one, approached the Blessed One and said to him, Maybe you got arms is setting. And the Buddha said, Was it you, evil one, who saw to it that I didn't get arms? And Mara said, Then, Venerable Sir, let the Blessed One enter Panchasala a second time for arms. I will see to it that the Blessed One gets arms. And the Buddha said, You have produced tea married Mara, having assailed the Tathagata. Do you really think, O evil one, my evil does not ripen? Happily indeed we live, we who own nothing at all. We shall dwell feeding on rapture, like the devas of streaming radiance. Then Mara, the evil one, disappeared right there. And it's the end of the sutta. So the Buddha says, uh, you have produced the merit, uh, Mara, having assailed the Tathagata. This word Tathagata uh, means uh, thus gone one. Thus gone one. Because he has gone already. Uh. But in the Mahayana translation, uh, they say, thus come one, Rulai. Mm-hmm. That is Ruchi gone, <laughs> but they translate wrongly as yes. does, does come one. So the Buddha says huh, that uh, this Mara is trying to tempt the Buddha, say, you enter the village a second time, nah, I'll make sure you get arms food. The Buddha said, nah, happily we live, nah, we shall dwell feeding on rapture, like the devas of streaming radiance. I think this refers to the devas in the second jhana heavens, huh? who are so full of bliss, uh, they don't think about eating food. Uh. So the Buddha uh, is saying, uh, even if he does not have any physical food, uh, he will feed on rapture. Uh. He will enter the jhanas uh, and dwell blissfully. Uh. 
So you see somebody like the Buddha, his meditation is so good uh, that uh, even he does not get food, uh, he will just abide in bliss uh, probably the whole day. 4.19 at Savati. Now on that occasion, the Blessed One was instructing, ex exhorting, inspiring and gladdening the monks with the Dhamma talk concerning Nibbana. And those monks were listening to the Dhamma with eager ears, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, applying their whole minds to it. Uh, one minute now. It just come to my... Uh, I just remembered uh, just now the previous sutta where Mara possessed the villages uh, so that they did not give any food to the Buddha. Now, what do you think? Will they get demerit? Uh? Mara has influenced their mind uh, so that they were not inclined to give alms food to the Buddha. Uh. So actually, because of that, uh, they actually... My view, uh, my personal view is that they create bad karma. It's just like some, sometimes uh, somebody incites you, uh, encourages you to do evil. Uh, but you have a free mind. Uh, you can decide yourself whether you want to do or you don't. Want. Just because somebody encourages you uh, and then you use that excuse uh, to do evil, uh, you, you still have to be responsible for it. Uh. That's why in some other suttas I just mentioned that uh, people uh, were influenced in this way. Uh, after they pass away, sometimes they go to a bad rebirth. Uh. So, so even though uh, some people may think uh, they put the blame on Mara, but it's true that uh, Mara does get demerit. Uh, Mara get. Uh, does uh, evil karma, but the person who refuses to give food to the Buddha, he also does evil karma. Uh, so that's why uh, we are responsible for anything we do. We cannot put the blame on somebody else. So coming back to this uh, 4.19, uh, so the Buddha was teaching the Dhamma to the monks uh, about Nibbana. Then it occurred to Mara, the evil one. This ascetic Gautama is instructing, exhorting, inspiring and gladdening the monks who are applying their whole minds to it. Let me approach the ascetic Gautama in order to confound them. Then Mara, the evil one, manifested himself in the form of a farmer, carrying a large plough on his shoulder, holding a long goat stick, his hair disheveled, that means untidy, wearing hempen garments, rough garments, his feet smeared with mud. He approached the Blessed One and said to him, Maybe you've seen oxen, ascetic. And the Buddha said, What are oxen to you, evil one? And then Mara said, The eye is mine, ascetic. Forms are mine. Eye contact and its base of consciousness are mine. Where can you go, ascetic, to escape from me? The ear is mine. Sounds are mine. Uh, uh, etc. The nose is mine, ascetic. Odors are mine, etc. The tongue is mine, ascetic. Tastes are mine. The body is mine, ascetic. Tactile objects are mine. The mind is mine, ascetic. The first mind is M I N D, eh? the second mind is M I N E. Eh? The mind is mine, ascetic. Mental phenomena are mine. Mind contact and its base of consciousness are mine. Where can you go, ascetic, to escape from me? I'll stop here for a moment. So here, Mara is saying, the six consciousness which makes up the world belongs to me. So you cannot escape from me as long as you exist. When we exist, we are in the world of the six consciousness. And the six consciousness is full of temptation. The six objects, six sense objects, tempt us. Then the Buddha said, The eye is yours, evil one. Forms are yours. Eye contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no eye, no forms, no eye contact and its base of consciousness, there is no place for you there, evil one. The ear is yours, evil one. Sounds are yours. Ear contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no ear, no sounds, no ear contact, 
and his base of consciousness. There's no place for you there, evil one. The nose is yours, evil one. Odors are yours. Nose contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no nose, no odors, no nose contact and its base of consciousness, there is no place for you there, evil one. The tongue is yours, evil one. Tastes are yours. Tongue contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no tongue, no taste, no tongue contact and its base of consciousness, there is no place for you there, evil one. The body is yours, evil one. Tactile objects are yours. Body contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no body, no tactile objects, no body contact and its base of consciousness, there is no place for you there, evil one. The mind is yours, evil one. Mental phenomena are yours. Mind contact and its base of consciousness are yours. But evil one, where there is no mind, no mental phenomena, no mind contact and its base of consciousness, there is no place for you there, evil one. Kamara said, That of which they say is mine. And those who speak in terms of mind, M I N E, if your mind, M I N D, exists among these, you won't escape me, ascetic. And the Buddha said, That which they speak of is not mine. I'm I'm not one of those who speak of mine. You should know thus, O evil one. Even my path you will not see. Then Mara, the evil one, disappeared right there. Yeah. So you see, the Buddha replied, yeah, this sense, six, sense, six senses, yeah, and the six sense consciousness, and the six sense basis, and all that, yeah, is yours. Yeah. But where there is no six sense, no six basis, no six uh, sense consciousness, yeah, there's no place for you. Yeah. Because the state of Nibbana, of Parinibbana, is out of these, uh, out of these six senses, uh, the world of the six senses. Uh, so the Buddha can dwell in that state uh, called the cessation uh, of perception and feeling, uh, which is also the cessation of consciousness. Uh, all the six consciousness stops. Uh, uh, and uh, an arahan can abide uh, for a maximum of seven days uh, in that state. Uh. So uh, that kind of state, uh, mara, uh, cannot cannot and uh, cannot enter at all. Uh. That's why the Buddha said there's no place for you there. Uh. Four point twenty. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the coastal lands in a small forest hut in the Himalayan region. Then when the Blessed One was alone in seclusion, a reflection arose in his mind thus, Is it possible to exercise rulership righteously, without killing and without instigating others to kill, without confiscating and without instigating others to confiscate, without sorrowing and without causing sorrow? Then Mara the Evil One, having known with his own mind the reflection in the Blessed One's mind, approached the Blessed One and said to him, Herbal Sir, let the Blessed One exercise rulership righteously, without killing and without instigating others to kill, without confiscating and without instigating others to confiscate, without sorrowing and without instigating others to cause sorrow. And the Buddha said, For what do you see, evil one, that you speak thus to me? And he said, Venerable Sir, the Blessed One has developed and cultivated the four bases of spiritual power or psychic power, made them a vehicle made them a basis, stabilized them, exercised himself in them, and fully perfected them. And Venerable Sir, if the Blessed One wishes, he need only resolve that the Himalayas, the king of mountains, should become gold, and it would turn to gold. And the, and the Buddha said, If there were a mountain made of gold, made entirely of solid gold, not double this would suffice for one. Having known this, fare evenly. How could a person inclined to sensual pleasures, who has seen the source when suffering springs, having known acquisition or attachment as a tie in the world, a person should train for its removal? Let Mara, the evil one, realizing the blessed one knows me, the fortunate one knows me, sad and disappointed, disappeared right there. So here, the Buddha one day was thinking, 
uh, is it possible for a king to rule according to Dhamma without hurting others? And then Mara came to tempt him, asked him, why don't you become a king? Then uh, he also said, nah, uh, you, are, you have developed psychic power. Nah. If you want, nah, the whole Himalaya mountains nah, can turn into solid gold. And the Buddha said, nah, even two Himalaya, two Himalaya mountains made of solid gold nah, is not sufficient nah, if you are not contented, nah, if you have desire and greed. Nah. So that's why the Buddha said, nah, a person should remove uh, attachment nah. He moves sensual desire. Actually, uh, in the Bible, uh, Jesus also was tempted by the Mara because uh, Jesus was meditating in the desert 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, he did not take uh, food, so he was meditating. And so Mara was afraid uh, that he was near to enlightenment and brought him up the hills, or uh, up the mountains, and asked him like to become a king. Uh, so Jesus also refused uh, the temptation. So it's a little bit similar to the sutta.